Hey, what is going on and welcome to another project. In this project, we're going to build a digital clock with interchangeable background images and also a focus section down here where we can type in what our focus for the day is and then JavaScript will display it. Now, this project is based on the internal clock of your PC or your Mac. It will take the information and based on the time when it's between the specific time periods, it's going to display a good morning, a, a good day, a good afternoon or a good night. And also depending on that, the images will change. Also in this project, we're going to learn about the following things. We're going to get our DOM elements by using single element selectors like get element by ID and query selector and multiple element selectors with query selector all. We're also going to use variables, let and cons, functions, regular functions. That is, we're not going to use error functions, some conditionals, if else statements, and also comparison operators and logical operators like is it greater or smaller than or equal to and the end keyword. We're also going to use strings and numbers and data objects. This is the main focus actually of this project. Get hour, get minute and get seconds from that get uh, from that new date object. Okay, so let's also check out the finished project. It's going to look as following. For example, right now it's 9 a.m. Depending on what time it is, it's going to display a.m. or p.m. We have down here are seconds, here are minutes, and here are hour. Now, right now it's daytime, so it's good day, Norbert. It's past, I believe I set it to eight o'clock. So after it's eight o'clock, it's good day, no longer in the morning. And also, what is your focus? Now, let me first of all change a couple of things. Uh, also, created a manual method to change them. So, for example, if I would change the hour, then we will get good afternoon. I'm just going to change the hour. And you will see the differences. So going now to 9.53, it's PM and it's good night, Norbert. I was going to type in their name. Now it's in the afternoon, so good afternoon. And also good morning. So that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and of course we can also we go back a few steps. Let's type in here, for example, what's your focus? Our focus for today is JavaScript this part you hit hit enter this is this will happen through an event listener if you hit our enter key today's focus is javascript okay so hope you're excited let's get started with the project all right so let's get started with our ui so i just created a empty folder i called it digital clock so let's first of all create our index.html and then a style.css file Okay, let's go back into our HTML. Now, the skeleton is actually pretty simple. Uh, one thing though, I did use Google Fonts for this. And to be more precise, the font family that I used was Poppins. So let's select, go to Google Fonts, select Poppins, and select the regular. So the regular style, which is 400 font weight. Okay, I'm going to link it up using using our HTML. We can also import it in our CSS, as you know. So I'm going to go up here, link it, whoa, do not want to create a div, link it up here, and we have the font family we're going to use within our body text. Let's go to our CSS, grab onto the body, and paste in our font family. Okay, now let's go back to our HTML. Also, let's link up our CSS, so link, and style the CSS. Now within our body tags, let's start creating our digital clock. This is just going to have a main container with a class of clock container. Within here, we will have three divs. The first div will have a ID of display clock. Display and clock and also a class of clock. Okay, and we're going to leave this empty because this is where our clock will be displayed. Now underneath of this, actually let's take a look at our finished project. Underneath our display clock, we'll have our user. So right here where it says good afternoon, is going to be where the user is going to be inserted using JavaScript. So let's create another ID of user and also a class of user. I'm just going to type in for now user. Okay, so we have something 
display. Let's also open this up using live server. So right click, open with live server. And should get it open right here. Okay, there's our user. Whee! Tiny user. Now next up, we're going to create a container for our label and our import. That's right here. Let me actually refresh this. Right here, this is a label and this is a input tag. So let's do this by first of all creating a, another div with a class of focus. Or should I create a section? Nah, let's create a div. It doesn't matter for now. Focus container. Okay, within our focus container, we will have our label, which will just have a title of what is your focus. And underneath of this, we'll have our input tag. Now the input tab will have the type of text and it will also have a class of focus. Okay, and that's basically it for our, H, uh, for our HTML. Now down in our body, right before our body, we will just need to include our script tag with the source of, we're going to call, it the, call this main.js. Let's call it clock.js. Clock dot js and let's also create it clock dot js and that's it for now now let's go back into our styling to our css file and first of all i'm going to do a basic reset so right before our body tag actually I'm going to take start then comma before and comma after so we can reset each and everything in our web page we're going to reset our padding to zero and our margin to zero. Okay, and also the board box size I'm going to set to border box. Nothing will go outside our borders. So we have a font family set up. Let's go back to our document. Hey, I didn't give it a name. Go back to our HTML and give it the name of digital clock. Clock. There we go. Okay, now we can go back to our CSS and let's set our body to, to have a height of 100 viewport height. So everything is going to focus within this section of the page. Now within our body, I want to take my class of clock container and position it absolutely. I'm going to do this in order to position the clock right within the, in the center, that center of the page. So we're going to use position absolute and we're also going to push it down 45% from the top and left is going to be positioned 50% okay so the entire content is right here now I could zoom in a bit so you can see this and we're going to zoom out later on now we also need to push it back a bit by using transform and translate of on both axes. I'm going to use minus 50% on the X and comma minus 50% on the Y axis. Okay, and now it's that center of the in the page. So even if I zoom this out, you can see it's in the dead center. Okay, next up, everything that will be in this container will have a text shadow of two pixels, one pixel, and one pixel, also the color of hash free free free. So I'm not using that much colors in our code today, so we're not also not going to create any variables. Okay, next up we're going to align the text to the center, and everything should be now in the center of the page. Okay, now let's take our class of clock. And let's change its color to white. So hash FFF. And also let's increase its font size to 150 pixels. Now this clock is right here. And this is where we're going to insert, insert our JavaScript. Now we can't see anything right now because we didn't insert anything. So let's just type in here clock or actually display time, display time, and that's enough. 
Now this is huge because I have it zoomed in. So when we go to go back to 100%, it's going to look like this display time. And this is where our time will be inserted. Okay, now let's go back to our CSS. And right in here, we're going to style our user. So this one down here, let's grab onto the user class and let's also set its color to hash FFF and also increase its font size to 2.8 RAM. Now let's also take care of our focus container down here and then we're done with our styling. So class of focus container and down here we're going to give it a bit of a margin from the top. So let's push it down a bit with the free RAM and let's also change its color. You know what? I'm going to do something else. I'm going to change this, take this color and put it in our clock container. So everything that's in the clock container will now have a white color. You we'll also take it off from the user so we have lesser CSS. And now let's increase this font size to 2 RAM. Okay, and last thing we need to increase, we need to manipulate a bit this input tag right here. So let's first of all grab onto it within our focus container or input tag. First of all, let's give it a width of 100% of its container then a height of 60 pixels. We're gonna be just a bit more larger, there we go. Let's give it a background of transparent. And now let's take out, out a couple of things, for example, the border, don't have, want it to have any borders and our outline. Let's also set it to none. Okay, so if we click on it, there's a container. Now it starts here. So let's set our text aligned to the center. And now it's going to start in the middle when we type something in here. Now a couple of things we still need to do is give it a border to the bottom. So border and bottom of two pixels solid and in a bit darker white color. Let's also increase this font size to free RAM changes color actually the color we already had it set from our container and that's it okay now we're still missing an image but the image will be actually inserted using javascript so that's pretty much it for this time let's now take care of our logic so our javascript okay so now let's go into our javascript file and first of all we need to talk about the document content load now that is the document content load event is fired when the initial HTML document has been completely loaded and parsed without waiting for style sheets, images, and subframes to finish loading. And as I said, this is a event. So we need to first of all listen for the window. We're going to add an event listener and we're going to listen for the DOM, the document object model, content, load it okay and when this happens we'll create a function called show time and will be initiated so let's go down here and create our function function show time Now within this function, we're going to use something called the date object. Now, if you never use the date object, this object represents a single moment in time in a platform independent format. Now, there's something interesting about this. The date object contains the number that represents milliseconds since the 1st of January, 1970 UTS. So let's first of all create a let, which we're going to call date and to this date, we're going to assign a new new date object and open and close parenthesis. Now let me also show you this date object. So I'm going to create here console log and to take the date and that add a set time method which will set the time to this object. 
So let me also hit inspect, refresh here, hit inspect and open up our console. And as you can see, it's already loading. And as soon as this loads, it's going to launch, let me increase this a bit, our console log of date set time. Now this is a waiting for number and it's already telling me that at the line six, the awaited format is not a number. So let's type in here a number. I'm going to use five zero zero zero. So these are milliseconds. Okay, this is going to come in handy a bit later on. So I'm going to delete this console log, save it, and comment it out. Now let's go down here and declare three things, actually four things. We need a hour, so let h date is equal to the date and get hour method get hours and this is usually a branch between 0 and 23 now let's create another one which is minutes so get get minutes this is this branch is between 0 and 59 and the last one I'm going to create let seconds Actually, not the last one, but the before last one. So, date dot get seconds. And this will get us the seconds, and they also branch between 0 and 59. The last thing we need is to create a session. This session will tell us is it AM or is it PM? Anti meridian or post meridian? So let's call this session. I'm going to set it to a string of AM first of all. Now we need to create our logic. So let's say when the hour is zero, then we're going to display it as 12 o'clock. So if the H, the hour, is equal to zero, then the hour, now we will assign it to 12, the so number 12. Now if the hour is more than 12, then we're going to take the hour and assign it to the hour minus 12. We're going to subtract 12 from it. Now did I just type in phi? I wanted to type in if. P is not a statement. Okay, and we're going to return a session which is PM now. So when this condition will be true, then we'll su subtract from the hour 12, so it's past 12 o'clock, and we're going to change the session from AM to PM. Now we will add zeros to the hours, the minutes, and the seconds. And we can do this by typing in if the hour is larger than, is less than 10, then the hour will be a string of zeros, we're going to display actually zero, plus the hour. So each hour is less than 10, we will display zero first of all, and then add the hour to it. Because this is time to start to cal calculate, and as soon as it passes 59 seconds, it reaches 60 seconds, it's going to add one minute. And as soon as it passes 59 minutes, it reaches 60 minutes, it's going to add a hour. And as soon as it passes 10 hours, it's going to add a zero, and then the hour to it, another hour. So it's going to be 10 and then 11 and 12. Okay, now if we're going to do the same thing for the minutes, if the minutes are less than 10, then we're also going to take the minutes and assign it to 0 plus m plus the minute themselves. And the same thing we need to do to the seconds. So I'm going to copy this 
and replace M with S. Whoa, I want to do that. Just S. Okay. Now, I don't think that's clean enough what we did here. There's a second alternative we can create if statements, and they're called ternary operators. So I'm going to use this free right here to give you an example of ternary operator. Now, if you never use them, the conditional ternary operator is the only JavaScript operator that takes free operands. So first of all, the condition, this is the condition. So let me actually show you this. Let's take the hour, for example. We're going to take the condition. So if the hour is less than 10, then followed by a question mark. And after the question mark comes the expression. So then the expression that to, is to be executed if the condition is true. If hours are less than 10, then I'm going to take the hour, assign them to zero, and I'm gonna add a hour to them. Then followed by a column. And finally, the expression that needs to be executed if this is false. Now we don't have here anything. So after our if statement, but if this is not true, then we're going to leave it as the hour. Okay, and we just need to do the same thing for our minutes. So I think that is here H, we're going to, whoa, didn't want to do that. So control Z, U down there. And next up is the minutes. So I'm going to take one hour here, hold down shift, then D. Hold down command or control on the Mac and D, D, D and replace them with minutes. And the same thing for the seconds. So I'm going to just select one hour down here, command D, 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 and replace it with seconds, okay? And this is basically the same thing that is up here. I'm also going to show you this, yeah, when we get to the spot. Now, we need somewhere where we're going to put our time. So display time, this is where we're going to display our time. Now, we're going to assign all of this to a variable, first of all, a const, which we'll call time. And first, I'm going to assign it to a string, and then we're going to do something else. So, let's take our hour, plus a string of column, plus the minute, plus a string of column again, plus the seconds, then a empty string, plus a pipe, there we go, and this should be within quotations, and we're missing here plus. Okay, and then a empty string again, so plus empty string for a space, plus the session. Okay, so we have our time, and we could actually console log it down here, console log our time. Okay, and now it's 10, 21, and 3 seconds. And if I console log this again, you're going to see it constantly changing. And it, this is actually logging our real time now. Now, all we need to do is display our time somewhere. So, for this, we're going to grab on to our clock. Now, let's go to the document, dot get element by ID, and we gave our clock here the ID of display clock. And within here, we're going to change the inner HTML. And we're going to assign it to the time, the variable time. So what we did here in the console log, we're going to actually display in here. And there we go, there's our time. Now we need to constantly update this by hitting save. So what we need to do now is create a set time functionality. So we're going to create a set time function, and this will take in the show time function. So this function right here. And we're going to tell it that it should repeat every 1000 milliseconds or every second. Now, as soon as I hit save, there we go. Now it's also logging our time. 
So this right here, I'm going to comment this out. And it's displaying now the time. Now I said that we could do something else here. Instead of this string, we could also use, I'm going to comment this one. Uh, now let me make a copy. And we're going to take our hour and use something called template literals. And now first of all, we're going to set it in using backticks. We're going to copy everything that is in here into this backticks. Now this is actually a string for it now because the template literal allows for both multi-line strings and string interpolation. Now because this h is a variable, we need to use here curly braces and before them a dollar sign. Now this is going to take the hour. Then we don't need here plus, just columns. Then the minutes, I'm going to select this, put it into curly, well, put it into camera case. Now the dollar sign, this is the, these are the minutes. And every Y space that we leave is will be represented within our time. So this also out with you. We're going to start deleting this. We need our columns. We need our seconds also as a variable. Then we need our pipe. And then we need our session variable. Okay. So I'm going to comment out this part. And let's see, hey, it's the same result. I think my word wrap is offset, so command palette, word wrap, enter, there we go. Okay, so we just achieved the same thing using template literals. And I think this right here is much shorter than this. Now I do want the seconds to be much smaller, so I'm going to actually not use here columns but a dot first of all I'm going to take this and create a small tag so let's create a small tag within here you could also create tags and if I type in here small there's a small tag and I'm going to take the from the dot and the seconds actually also the session cut them out and paste them in here Woo. that shouldn't happen we need a back text right there Okay, now I just put them into a small tag. Now what I need to do is go into my CSS and take the small tag and decrease its font size, let's say 50 pixels. Okay, so now they are much smaller. Next up, let's change the background. So I'm going to type in here comment, change, background, or body background, body background. Now for this I'm going to take, create first of all a let and just initiate it. So let BG for background. Next we're going to create a const for the user because we want here to a username to be displayed. So I'm going to automatically set it or hard code it to Norbert. You can type your own name if you want then a const, if not, if you want to use Norbert, then I'm really honored, but as you wish. Okay, and this should be actually user name. Now we're going to grab onto the user by creating another const user, we're going to grab onto the document dot get element by ID, and we called this part right here, user, we give it the ID of user, so within quotations, user. Okay, so now let's quickly console log this. Let's see if we grabbed onto the right thing. Console log user and there's a user. Okay, we're going to comment this one out. Let's go a bit further up. Now let's create a few if statements. Actually, we're going to use now a if, else if, and then else statement. So if, let's think about it. If the hour is less than eight, and there's our end. There's our end. And the session is equal to AM. And this triple equal means that is the type 
and value equal to am. So it's a string with the value of am. The type is string and the value is am. Then the bg, so the variable that I created up here, will be assigned. And I'm going to copy this in right now because it's actually just a a URL from source.unsplash, which is a, which is a website for free stock images. So I'm going to assign this variable to a URL, and, we, and I also used backticks. Okay. Now I'm going to grab onto the user that we created up here, which grabs onto the ID of uh, this div right here. I'm going to change its inner HTML to a template literal again. Good morning. I'm going to use now interpolation again and our string of user name. Okay, so let's hit save and let's go over this again. So if the hour is less than eight and it's am, then the background should be this and the user should be assigned the name of Norbert. Now we also need to display it somewhere. And for this, we first of all need to, so the hour is not less than eight, but it's greater than eight, it's 10. So let's say we're going to create another else if statement, else the hour, if the hour is less than 11, actually less than 12, and the session, no, I need to put in 11, or but stay focused. And the session is equal to the type and value of AM. So it's not noon, it's between morning and it's day, okay? Then we're going to the same thing, but I'm going to use a different image. I'm going to use this one. This actually, very quickly, it's a URL. It's a HTTPS, so it's secured net um, root, and then we have our source dot unsplash dot com, and this right here is actually the ID of the image. So this is very important. As you can see this changes. This stays the same, and this one changes. And also, and instead of good morning, we're going to say good day. Oh, I just used else. It should be else if. So hey, there we go. Good day, Norbert, because it's 1033. Okay, now we need two more things when it's evening, when it's the afternoon, and when it's nighttime. So I'm going to copy this else if statement. Let me type it in. Else if again, the hour is less than eight. And because it's afternoon, and the session is equal to I I already know you guessed it, PM. Then the background color is going to be, background is going to be this URL and the user will be good afternoon, Norbert, or the username. Good afternoon. Okay, and the last one will be then else. We're going to assume that it's night. So going to insert this one right here. Now you're starting to wonder where is our image? We need to insert our image somewhere. And for this, we're going to use a separate line of code. We're going to create a const. So I'll show const of body. And let me also create here comment insert bg image. So body, we're going to grab onto the document dot query selector. I'm going to select our body tag. Now to our body tag, we're going to use style dot style and then background. And now we're going to assign using temporal layers again, the variable of BG. And we're going to set it as cover center backslash cover, hit save, and there's our background. Now let's go up here and let me show you if I comment this part out, then this is still working. 
So this means that this if statements are working. All right, so let's go down and do our last thing, which is change this focus part right here. So what is your focus? Let's take, our, take care of our focus part. And for this, we're going to grab onto the document dot query selector. I'm going to use query selector here because I want to be able to select from the class of focus container the input tag. And we're going to add an event listener to it. And this will listen to a key press. Now when this key press happens, a function will be launched, which is going to do the following. If, oh yeah, and also if a event dot key, so it's a key event is equal to the type and value of enter, then we're going to create a const called focus. We're going to go into a document, we do query selector, and grab on to our focus container again and the input tag. So I'm going to copy this and place it in here. And there are too many. Oh no, that one we need it. Now this event right here. We need to type in also in our function as a expected event. So normally you would you you will see two types of event, either e or event. So use them as the wish. You could either type in e, and you select both of them, give them as an e or a event. So this function will listen for an event. And if this, that event is a key press, and if that key press is the enter, then we're going to take the input tag right here. I'm going to go into our document again, query selector, grab onto the focus container now. So focus dash container. I'm going to change this inner HTML to using a template string to whatever we typed in here. So let me go through this again. We are taking, we're grabbing on from the DOM, from our focus container. This focus container has what is your focus and this input tag. We're only grabbing onto the input tag. We're listening for a key press right in here. And if that key press is enter, we're going to grab onto the input tag again, we're going to assign it to a variable focus. Then we're going to grab onto the entire document, entire container of focus container again. And now we're going to change this inner HTML. And we're going to change it to a H6 first of all, which will contain a, a today, just a string of today. And after this h6, we will have a h1. And this h1 will contain whatever we typed in in our focus. So let's use interpolation again. And within here, we're going to use the focus variable. Okay, so let's try this out. We are in the container, just clicked in the input tag. Now if I type in uh, let's say, uh, let's type in JavaScript. Now why is this doc? Let me go into our CSS, input, input tag, and let's set the color to white. Hash, FFF. Okay, okay, Java, and script, and if I hit, I can type in everything else, I can click on the backspace, I can click on numbers, and nothing happens, but if I hit enter, JavaScript, hit enter, then damn it, 
that's not what I wanted. It's an object. So let's go over this again. Select JavaScript, bam, 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 bam. If the key press is enter, then grab onto the document. From this, you screen select to grab onto the input tag, then grab onto the container and change this inner HTML to the, oh, not to the focus, because obviously this is a object, but to the value, because we want to display whatever we typed in here. So the value that we typed in here. So let's try this again, JavaScript. And enter. Today, today's focus is JavaScript. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the project. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh yeah, one last thing up here. Let's go to our date set time again. And if I comment this back in, hit save, I can now set the time as I wish. So there's actually 50, let's go down here. 500 milliseconds, hit save, 5,000, 50,000. And this actually change, oh yeah, there we go. Now this is changing, is adding those milliseconds if you divide them then by seconds and by hours and so forth and so on, it's changing the time. You can see PM is changing, time is changing. And as you can see also here, good night Norbert. And if I add another one, good afternoon, good morning, and so forth and so on, good day. So good day to you my fellow coder, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.